Hey, what is going on, internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. See what I did there? Okay, so obviously in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to set our text and animate it to the beat of the song, or you can also use this for a lyric video, or if you just want to create a high action paced uh, style of video like we're doing right here in this tutorial. So no matter what you're looking to do, this tutorial has you covered. We'll be looking at some awesome text animation in here and going through some awesome soundtrack. Now, this tutorial was inspired from this video hive template and obviously we have a lot going on here and I want to be able to break down some of these templates on video hive just like this and show you guys how we can create high-end professional work and I of course invite you to definitely check out the links in the description to check out the other typographic videos just like this so you can get a good idea of what works for you and if you're in a time crunch I also highly suggest buying these templates because they will save you a lot of time so Let's go ahead and let's get started in this After Effects tutorial. So if you want to follow along with the tutorial step by step, you can download the project files for free off of my website. The link is in the description and go ahead and download the free project files. You can see how I do things in this tutorial a little bit more close. We have a clean composition, nothing in here. So first things first, always bring in your soundtrack. So here's our soundtrack and the first thing you want to do is you want to hit LL on your keyboard to bring up the audio waveform. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this up real quick. So essentially, depending on your song and how good you are at this, you're going to want to listen to your soundtrack. So let's go ahead and play a few seconds. Okay, so our goal is to cue out all the beats in this track. So anytime there's a drum hit, that's what we want to sync to. And if you're doing a lyric video, you might not be able to see it in the audio waveform. But obviously with my drum hits, you can see the spikes in the waveform and we can manually or you know from our eyes see where our sync points are at so if you don't see this you know if you don't have a good representation of your audio you're gonna have to listen to it and you're gonna have to mark it out so let's go ahead and mark it out now so our first beat is right here obviously so I'm gonna skip that and go to the second beat here and go up to layer and I'm gonna click on add marker and this allows me to mark out the layer so I know that I need to sync the song here and then I'm gonna move over to the next beat and I'm going to add another marker. So essentially, I want to go through the entire soundtrack here and mark out all my sync points. The soundtrack that I'm using in this video is called Percussion from AudioJungle.net. I'll drop a link in the description so you can check it out if it's what you're looking for for your video. All right, so I'm not going to go through the entire track, but obviously this is what you want to do. And the first things first, let's go ahead and type out our text. And what I suggest doing is to make sure that your typeface and font choices are consistent from the beginning. Because you can easily, you know, go right through this if you have a consistent typeface choice. And I'm going to be using the typeface Gotham. And it has a lot of fonts inside of it. That's why I love this typeface. I like this typeface option because it works in most situations. And I think it works great here. And I want to make sure I have all caps selected. And I'm going to type out my first piece of text, which is just, hey, this is the first word. And go to the Align tab. If you don't see the Align tab, go to Window Align and center this up. And this will be directly in the middle of our composition. I also suggest go to the paragraph window and make sure that it's centered text because we will be duplicating this layer. So obviously this is a nice graphic design option. I'm using a small font size and you know, it's just nothing crazy going on here, right? So what we want to do is a very simple animation in here to kind of, hey, this video is starting, right? So let's go and hit S on our keyboard for scales, add a keyframe for it. And let's just maybe scale this up by a touch. And as you can see, when you scale up the property here, the text here, it's scaling out from the anchor point. You're going to have to control click the pan behind tool. Just double click it twice and they'll center up the anchor point and then you'll need to realign it. And you know, no big deal there. And we'll come here to the first couple of frames here and we'll want to scale this back down to like 100%. And then we'll scale it out completely down a little bit more. And actually, I'll probably want this a little bit bigger. And then we can see in our timeline, we marked out our first marker here. And we want to end this clip here. So what we can do is go up to Edit, Split Layer, and just you know delete it for now. And we'll come here and play it real quick. All right, so not too much going on there. Obviously, the song is just starting. So we're not going to be like, hey, that's really synced up. But let's go ahead and add another one real quick. Come here. Let's duplicate this layer by hitting Control-D on a PC or Command-D on a Mac. And move this layer over here so we basically have a duplicate of the same text and let's go here to the textile tool and let's type out our next piece of text so hey what's all right so now 
Let's go ahead and make sure this in the markers, and it is. And let's go ahead and listen to what we've done again. All right, so that's obviously synced up. Let's go ahead and continue to add more onto this. Okay, and just preview this real quick. All right, obviously we have a parent sync going on here, and it looks really awesome. Let's go ahead and continue to add on this and do a little bit of a different text animation here. So let's come here and grab our text title tool again, and we can just type on on, and of course we'll line that up. And what's cool about this is uh, having a consistent typeface choice is that the typeface or the font is exactly the same all the way throughout. You just have to adjust the endpoints, and there should be no problem there. So make sure that comes on exactly when your last word comes on, or your last word uh, fades off. And we'll just sh uh, split this here and delete it. And what's really cool, maybe we don't even have to add any animation there. Just kind of leave that there for some style points. And let's just come here and duplicate this layer, bring it over to obviously the time indicator, and we'll move this over. And we'll type in our next text. So in this piece, there is several different sync points in here, and this is an important word, and it's usually probably going to be an important word in your video that you're, you're doing. So let's say we want to keep this on a little bit longer, but still sync it to the beat of the song. What I suggest doing is go ahead and open up the layer here, go to animate, and let's you know, have a variety of parameters here. I highly suggest you check these out so you can learn what to do, but my favorite one here is tracking. I love tracking. So what I want to do is obviously this word comes on here, and the next sync point is right here. So let's go ahead and add a keyframe for tracking amount. And let's move this over by one frame. And let's go ahead and track this out by a little bit. Maybe we'll go 30. And the second beat is right here. And we'll just move this out a little bit more. Add another keyframe. And we'll do that. And then we'll have this come off right at the last sync point. And now we'll preview this real quick. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but I want to add a little bit more animation to this. So come over here and let's just come here and hit S ring keyboard to the last keyframe. We'll add a keyframe for scale. Move it over by one frame and we'll just scale this up. And before we do that, make sure the pan behind tool, or sorry, the anchor point is in the middle of the text and we'll just scale this up by a touch. And that'll just add a little bit more, you know, emphasis on the title and make it a little bit more interesting. All right, that's cool. Now we type out our next line of text. So let's say we want to add like a series of words on rather than just using one word, which of course, probably in your case, you're not going to want to do one word at a time. So let's come over here and let's type out our text again. And obviously here we'll do Josh Noel. Don't even know how to spell my last name from. Okay. So we'll do three words here. You can do obviously more depending on what you're looking to do. And we're going to go ahead and animate these on one at a time very easily. So open this window back up, go to animate and add opacity to it and we'll come here to the range selector and we'll add a keyframe for start and we'll move forward in time just by maybe to the end of the sync point so maybe right here and we'll set it to 100 percent and we'll come here to opacity and we'll set it down to zero percent and open up the advanced tab and where it says smoothness let me raise this up a little bit because the timeline's starting to crop in a little bit and set the smoothness here underneath the advanced tab to zero percent and then set the based on to words. All right, so let's go ahead and run through this real fast. All right, awesome. And that looks great. So one word at a time, and it's pretty much synced up the song. And now we wanna add in our big title and we'll come here, just get this out of the way and we'll type out our next title, Sunduck Film. All right, still cannot type. There we go. And I'm coming to the line tab. Boom. So I kind of want to drop this in here very slightly. So let's come here to the animate. Let's add a position. Let's come here to range selector. And once again, add a keyframe for start. Move it forward by just a couple of frames, 100%. And offset the position upward just by a touch. And obviously we can't see it. So come here, do it there. And run through that real quick. Then I want to go from here to add, and I want to add opacity to this. And I want to set the opacity down to 0%. All right, and it's really fast. Okay, so this is pretty much what we have so far. All right, so it took us approximately 10 minutes to do four seconds of animation. 
And obviously we're going to go into expand off this video. And if you're working on a minute to even three minutes, this could take a very long time to do. So we're going to look at a plugin that I like to use called Animation Composer. And essentially, this is a transition preset for text and objects that you can drag and drop onto your layers very easily. And this is amazing. I made a full video on it. I'm going to show you right now how this works. Animation Composer is a free plugin. And there's also several different packs of uh, presets that you can use to expand your library. And I'll link those in the description of the video. But let me show you how awesome this is. So we can come here just to 2D layer transformations. And say we want to come here and grab this preset. And we can click it, drag it, and apply as in. Make sure your layer is selected. And we can drag in the endpoint here in the timeline. And we run right through this real quick. You see that we were just able to animate this just by dragging and dropping within a second and we have a huge library so we can continue to expand off this so we can come here and maybe do like a you know a fade in here so we drag drop this in here bring the endpoint in move on to the next layer and maybe just want to be a little bit more you know ecstatic because is a you know music is a big word here for what I'm trying to say and maybe we'll do this one we'll drag and drop it applies in and we'll just scruff through this real quick So we just did some very subtle animation really quick. Obviously, you can drag out the endpoints, make them a little bit longer. So it's really awesome. And you can go back to Animation Composer. You can make sure your layers are selected. You can go to More Tools. And you come here to the Keyframe Wingman. And you can increase the smoothness of your keyframes. So this could be a little bit more smooth. And I made a full review on this plugin. Go ahead and check that out in the description. And also make sure you check out the presets to watch a full in-depth video on this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to finish this up and it should take about a couple of seconds. All right. And using Animation Composer, we just quickly finished up this animation very easily. So that's really cool. And once again, you go ahead and check that out in the description. All right. And here's a full recap. So that looks all really good and let's go to the next part of the tutorial where we start customizing the background and stylizing what is going on in this you know project file so it's not just black background and white text because you know that gets boring after a while say if you want to do something different so let's go to layer new solid and let's change the background a little bit so we'll call this one bg and we'll click ok go to effect generate and we'll add gradient and ramp and we'll set the end color to black Set the start color to a very dark gray and set the ramp shape to radial ramp. And we can increase the ramp scatter by a little bit so there's no banding. There's going to be a little bit of banding on my end because of the compression of YouTube and my recording software. So just keep that in mind. And we we'll come over here and bring this layer to the bottom. And obviously, it's still a black background. But let's say we want to add, say, a white background here. Go back to, to layer, new, solid. And we make sure it's white and bring this to the bottom. And of course, we want to make sure we trim up the in and out points to be exactly where we need it to be. And then what we want to do is grab our textile tool, grab our text, and change the color to black. Or I'm going to do a dark gray here to make that stand out a little bit more. So now we'll have a little bit of a transition there. And it'll kind of keep your viewers on their toes like, hey, that just changed color. So let's say we want to impose an image inside of this text. And we'll come here. I got an image and we'll bring it underneath Sunduck Film. And we can trim up the layer here, obviously, to just fit our text. And actually, we don't even have to do that. Come to the track mat and set this to alpha mat. And now we have our image in here. And we, of course, probably want to make a white background. So come here and duplicate it. And we'll bring this over here. All right, and we run through this real quick. All right, cool. And of course, we can do a lot of background things, and you can add other types of textures and whatnot in here. But one thing that I like to use are creative assets. So, like, I have this distortion asset, and I also have lens flares, and all these assets are stuff that you should have inside your library. I'm just going to drag and drop in here, but I'm going to go ahead and link a few assets in the description so you go ahead and check it out and see if you can build out your library so you can easily drag and drop and build custom graphics and impress your viewers and clients so let's take this deep distortion for example we can drag and drop it right on the internet part 
and we can bring this behind it and essentially come here close this up this looks really cool and adds a lot more character to your scene and we're able to do something that looks really amazing and we're just able to drag and drop it in here and that's why you should have creative assets because it saves you a lot of time and you do awesome work and let's say we want to add like a lens flare so maybe we'll add a lens flare under music and you know we'll scale this down this is a 4k lens flare and you know that looks good of course you might want to change the blend mode to screen depending on if you have a background or not all right and before we render this out make sure to turn on motion blur for all your layers and turn it on top and you should be good to go all right and after a quick render this is what we have all right so it looks really good there's a lot of great techniques in this video that i hope you're able to take away from and be able to create some custom sync text animation for your lyric video or for any text of the beat that you may be doing. And also be sure to check out those links I provided in the description. They will definitely help you take your video projects even further. These are products that I use for my professional work and also here on YouTube. So I definitely invite you to check those out and see if you can learn a few things from these templates and obviously how to incorporate stock elements just like this. So, so if you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to drop a like on the video because it helps me out tremendously. Subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video and always be creating.